<laughs> okay, let me just start with a couple things. Um, number one, um, as as you guys already know, and hopefully the fans know, on Saturday night a couple of pretty neat things are going to happen. Um, number one, uh, thanks to a great donation by Adidas, and in working with ASUCLA, we're going to have um, number 36 shirts for sale. Um, and, and what's really neat about it is that 100% of the proceeds are going to go to the Nick Pasquale Foundation. Um, after this game, we're going to try to get them in the bookstore, we're going to try to get them online. Uh, at that point, certainly we can't expect Adidas to continue to donate, but at least 40% of the proceeds going forward will go right to his foundation. The other thing is that we're going to have 30,000 blue towels with 36 on them. And, um, so those are for the fans. That's, a, that's just a, a great donation by Guerrilla Marketing and uh, a pretty cool gesture, I think. And so we'll give those out. The players will have them on the sideline before the game. Um, right after the moment of silence in tribute to Nick, uh, we're going to get that place going. So that's just a challenge for everybody. We're saying go nuts for Nick. So we're going to go crazy and it's going to be a, a blast. Um, we had a good week of practice so far. We've got another really important uh, practice tomorrow before we, uh, you know, get done with the physical work. But I'm very pleased with, the, our, with where we are after three days, uh, and excited to get back on the field again. You know, and excited to play at home again in front of our crowd on the Rose Bowl. You know, we really love playing at home, so it'll uh, it'll be a great night. So we're excited. How many shirts did the Adidas donate? I don't know how many they donated, uh, but it's a significant amount. They'll be on sale at the Rose Bowl. You know, they they rush through this thing, and they're bring actually they're going to bring them right to the Rose Bowl, as with the towels. And uh, I think it's a great gesture. You know, when a one and, and it's also ASUCLA. When 100% of the proceeds can go right to the foundation, I would hope that we'd be able to raise a lot of money for that for that foundation. And. Uh, just really, really appreciative of, of uh, Adidas and Scott Mitchell, who's marketing and business development here at UCLA, has kind of spearheaded all this. He's done an amazing job getting it organized quickly. And uh, you know, he went down last Saturday uh, to San Clemente and, and watched the game uh, at that at that Nebraska bar with the Pasquales. And uh, I mean, he's really you just see a whole lot of people that were affected by this and that are coming out to help. And it's a it's just a great gesture. So. I know our fans will be, uh, I know they'll be very respectful during that moment of silence and then I think we just need to let it all out and just show them how much we care. So that's what we're going to try to do as a team and I know our fans will follow suit. Um, is Shaq a little more elusive as a receiver than he is as an interviewee? Well, I don't know what you mean. Uh, he talked some SC stuff on the radio. Oh, did he? I didn't. Yeah, I don't, I don't okay. know about that. <laughs> Shaq's a heck of a receiver, man. I think he's probably one of the more underrated or uh, under maybe underappreciated regionally or nationally receivers that, that I know of. I mean, I think he's got tremendous talent. He's big, he's fast, he's physical. He's got uh, great competitiveness. You know, every time the scouts come through here, you know, they're looking at Shaq. I mean, and uh, he catches the ball consistently, can return on kicks. I think he's, I love having him on our team, man. I love his competitiveness. I love his spirit. I love his toughness. He's a heck of a player. He man. was talking about wanting to embarrass USC. Well, we're worried about New Mexico State University right now, so I, I, I don't follow some of that stuff. So I, I didn't see that. I'm worried about New Mexico State University. You mentioned yesterday how Nevada and Nebraska kind of brought some different things that you how, know. You, excuse me. Uh, that Nebra no, Nebraska and Nevada they brought some different things you know on defense that yeah. you, know, you weren't expecting. Does anything jump out on film from New Mexico State that might give you know your team a new test that? you might not see during a conference play or? You know, I think every week it's important to be prepared for unscouted looks. Uh, they just do some things up front that are just a little unusual. Sometimes they'll only have two defensive linemen, you know, and they'll have guys walked all over the place. And so it really forces you to follow your rules. But every week we kind of go into a game, at least early in a game, both offensively and defensively, and special teams, prepared for what we call unscouted looks, looks we haven't seen on film, you know, looks we haven't had a chance to practice. And then we just try to depend on our rules. You know, every play or every defense or every kicking game situation, you should have a set of rules that can carry you through basically anything you see. And if we can't, then we try to get to the sideline and make an adjustment quickly. Okay. What do you see from that true freshman quarterback? Well, he's elusive. Um, he's done a good job protecting the football. Uh, his, his accuracy has been good. He hasn't thrown it a ton. 
He's a very good player, you know, he's mature. Um, he doesn't seem to be phased by anything. And uh, so, uh, you know, we'll see how he does Saturday night. It, it'll, uh, it'll be fun to play against a guy like that. He's, he's a good player. Same sort of elusiveness as Taylor Martinez, Cody Pichardo, or is that I can't say that yet. I, I don't have enough film to compare. You know, um, those guys we got to watch a lot, yeah. especially Taylor. I mean, we played Taylor. We've seen a ton of tape of Taylor. We know him very, very well. This guy we haven't seen as much tape on. Uh, but I think anytime you're playing a guy that has that skill set, whether he's shown it or not, we know he has it. Then we have to be disciplined in our pass rush. We have to do an excellent job in the run game of making sure that he's taken care of as well as the back and any of their read option stuff. So fortunately for us, the last couple weeks, we've gotten some work against quarterbacks that are similar in style to this young man. As far as the secondary goes, in terms of you know, him challenging them, is, that, is there anything you want to see them prove before you guys get into the Pac-12 slate, or is there anything that they need to work on in particular before you see those Pac-12 quarterbacks? Um, well, I, I want to see consistency. You know, I, I want to see us play with consistency. I want to, I want to hear and see communication. And when I say see, because so much of our communication is nonverbal, uh, I want to see him make some plays on the ball and challenge people. And I wanted to see them continue to get the experience that they've gotten in the first two games. Because in every snap they take, whether it's a great snap, an average snap, or not so good snap, they're gonna make progress. They're gonna improve because they pay attention to details, because they go and study the film, because they have a, a yearning to be a great group. And uh, so it gives me a lot of hope going forward with that those guys. Would you like to see the good four guys in the defense back to get more time to play each other and the yeah. I always, you know, it's much like the offensive line. You know, we talked about the offensive line yesterday. You know, I think you asked, but somebody asked about the offensive line. And, you know, those two groups, you think about what they're protecting. The offensive line is protecting the quarterback, who is a very valuable commodity, and the secondary is protecting the end zone, which is probably the most valuable commodity. So. The cohesiveness in those two groups has to be very, very, very strong in order to have success. And the only way you're going to build that cohesiveness is for them to play together, you know, and over time develop it and get to know each other's, uh, you know, idiosyncrasies and, and how they're going to react to certain things and how they're going to communicate and how that's going to flow. So the more they can play together as a group, the better they're going to become because they are talented players. Coach, if you were ever to find yourself in a situation where you were to fake punt, which of your linemen, offensive or defensive, would you trust to be able to convert a two or three yard game? <laughs> Man, you caught me off guard there. Uh, let's give it to X because he's got the feet. You know, he's got, he's got, yeah, he's got some good feet, so he may be able to dance through the trash and get us a couple yards. But I'm not sure we're going to give it to any offensive line. <laughs> although, although you guys know, last year we threw that little uh, that, right. that yeah. pass out. To, was it X, right? No, was it, was it Torian or X? It was X. I think it was X. It was X. You see the dance out there. I'm going to refer you to the uh, Eagle Bank Bowl and go look at X's Did try he? to tackle eligible. Is that right? You, you might want to. Okay, yeah, I, I, <laughs> that's what Connor McDermott's for. That's right. Basketball <laughs> thing. Good question. You got me there. Well, defensive line wise, you guys have been rotating quite yeah. a bit. Is, have you noticed the mark difference? You know, when you can rotate those guys, that you know they're fresh. They're always. Yeah. They seem to be doing pretty well. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think that good defensive lines, um, you have to be too deep, and you have to be able to rotate those guys through. And I think that's at any level, especially this level and the next level. You know, in the NFL. If you can have eight defensive linemen that can go in and play and play, you know, give you a 30, 40 snaps a game, you're going to have, a, you're going to have some success. And we've got that here. You know, I think we've got eight guys that we suit up that are all really good players, and I feel comfortable with all of them going in. But the fact that we're able to rotate them in and out, keep them fresh, and then actually take one of them out on third down, you know, and gain that extra down, I think it's really helping us, and I think it'll help us as the season goes on. You know, it's really great to see Eddie and Kenny and Kylie getting some snaps. You know, not meaningless snaps, not mop-up snaps, but meaningful snaps in the middle of the game. And uh, it's just going to make us a better football team down the stretch. All right? Okay.